friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using this adorable Dear Friend stamp set from Hello Bluebird. I was coloring up these images just for fun last night and decided they were too cute not to share, so I decided to film a video. I'm going to be coloring with Copic markers today, so I've stamped my images in Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some Copic friendly cardstock. And the first image I'm going to color is the deer, and for him I'm using E50, E51, E53, and E55. I'm going to start with that E51, and I'm going to do the lighter parts of his body, so that's the darker of the two lighter shades. And I'm just going to lay in some shadows. I'm going to frame in his face, and then go down the sides of his neck and chest, I'm going to put a little bit on his tail and also his antlers. And then I'm going to come in with that E50 and really blend out that edge and make a really nice soft transition. I want my coloring to be really soft today. All of my coloring is going to be in neutral tones with just a few pops of bright color for accents. So now I'm coming in with that E55 and beginning to lay in the shadows for the rest of his body. I'm imagining that my light source is directly overhead in the center of the card, so almost as if it were noon. So all of the images that are going on the right hand side of the card, I will be shading on the right. And all of the images that will be on the left hand side of the card, I'll be shading on the left. Then I'm going to bring in that E53 and begin to blend out that E55. I'm going to shade the two legs that are on the other side of his body completely with those so because they would be cast in more shadow and then I will just blend out the edges of the rest of him. I did add just a thin line of shadow to the top of his back and the top of his head even though the sun is overhead um, I wanted him to have that kind of rounded three-dimensional appearance so he kind of lifts off the page and so I needed to add just a little hint of shadow there so it seems as if you know he's not just flat on the paper. So I blended out the E53 with the E51 so he was nice and soft but I didn't quite like the transition in a couple of places so I went back in with that E53 and just flicked a little bit more color towards the center and then I'm blending that out with the E51 once again. And I did the same thing to the top of his head just so it would match consistently with the rest of his fur. For his hooves, I'm bringing in E47, which is kind of a dark, dull brown. And then I'll move on to my squirrel. If you've been watching my channel for some time, you know that one of my favorite animals in the whole wide world is the red squirrels that we had when I used to live in Germany. And um, I just adore them. They're a little bit smaller than the squirrels that we have in the States but they're just so comical to watch. They're my favorite. They're just so much fun. So I'm coloring uh, this to be a red squirrel, even though we don't have them in the States, that's fine. And even though deer are a little bit different in Germany, that's fine too. It's just a card and you know, we can take a little artistic license. So I'm coloring him with E13, E15, E17, and E19. And I'm just doing darkest to lightest shading from uh, the bottom up and then also giving him just that little teeny bit of shadow at the top of his head just like I did on the deer to kind of lift him off the page. I wanted to color my bird to look like a robin as I'm sure you know robins are a sign of spring and we could sure use some signs of spring here in northwestern PA because it will just not stop snowing. <laughs> so even if it doesn't look like spring outside my window it is definitely spring in my heart. I am so ready for it. So I'm coloring him with E43, E44, and E47, again with the shadow on the right hand side. And then I'm going to bring in a little R20 for his belly. I'll use the R47 to color in his tiny little beak. And then I'm going to move on to my tree branch. And for that I'm using E21, E23, and E25. 
I'm using that E25 to lay in some color on the underside of the branches. I'm just using the very tip of my marker nib and using a really light hand so I can get some nice thin strokes, especially on those really narrow little branches. Then I'm going to come in with the E23 and start to blend that out. Now this is the one time where you don't need a perfect blend because it is bark and bark has a lot of kind of texture to it. And I'm even going to be drawing in some more texture just to add to that wood grain look. But before I get to that, I'm going to blend out the rest of this branch with the E21. And that's going to create a very nice highlight at the top since that's where our sun would be shining. Then I'm going to go back in with that E25 and I'm going to draw in some little whirls and lines and things. It doesn't have to be perfect, just any kind of little squiggles will do. You're just kind of adding that wood grain texture into the tree to make it look a little more realistic. And then I'm going to go over that one more time with the E21 just to help it fade a little bit into the wood. For the leaves, I'm using YG61, YG63, and YG67. This is a relatively new Copic combo for me. I picked up these markers not too long ago, and I've been really enjoying coloring with them. So I thought I would use them today because they're a nice kind of muted green. So I'm shading with the YG67 towards the bottom of the leaves, and by the bottom I mean the side that is facing towards the ground. Since all the leaves are kind of turned in different directions, it's going to be in a different placement on each of the leaves. But then I'm taking the YG63 and just shading upwards, and then I will finish with the YG61. So that will be at the top of the leaf where the sun would be hitting it the most. So if you're looking for a good color combo for foliage for like trees and bushes and brush, I think this is a really good combo and they blend really well together. I wanted to add just a tiny bit of detail to the leaves, so I'm taking the G99 and just doing a little line down the centers to kind of give it a little bit of separation there. I went back to my YG67 for the leaves of my flower. And for the rest of it, I'm going to dot in some V06 for a tiny little pop of color. The last thing I need to color is my mushrooms, and I'm using R24, R29, and R39 for those. I'm doing a little bit of shadow with the R39 on the right side, and then blending towards the left with the R29, just coloring carefully around those spots and then I'll fill in with the R24. For the stems, I'm using W1 and W3, just a little shading with the W3 on the right-hand side, and then blending to the left with the W1. I did decide to add some rosy cheeks for all my critters and also color in the inside of the deer's ears, so I'm using YR01 for that. Just really carefully dotting it in on the two darker colored animals. I have to add a few times just to get it to show up. And since the deer is a little too pronounced, I'll go over that with the E50. And then I'll just trim these out with the matching dies. So sometimes when you've spent all that time coloring your images, it's nice to create a very simple but effective background that's really going to let them shine. So for that, I like to do watercolor because you can do a nice muted wash that uh, really fades into the background. For me, the easiest way to do that is with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I find it blends really well on this vellum surface um, that does not allow the ink to seep in, so it really spreads nicely. I used number 041 light green for the bottom half with the grass, and then number 036 light blue for the sky, although that wasn't showing up very well, so I decided to switch to the 031 cobalt blue, and I liked that color much better. I still want it to be nice and soft in the background, but you definitely want to be able to see it. 
And since these colors do dry back just a little bit, I thought it was better to go with the darker shade. I'm going to blot up any drips along the sides that I don't want with a paper towel, and then I'm going to go back in with a little bit more color to intensify that. I started dropping it in at first, but I decided I preferred the look of the wash. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that darker blue and spread that on, and then I will set this panel aside to dry. Super quick and easy. Once that was completely dry, I die cut that with the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables. So that trims off about an eighth of an inch around the outside edge. So it'll be just a little bit smaller than the card front. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So I'm going to stamp that out twice to get a really good impression. And I'm also stamping the two grass images included in the set in the bottom left corner. Then I'm going to take the piece of scrap paper from the images we colored and just stamp out the word thanks because I want to do a two-part sentiment. And then while I have my misty out, I'm also going to stamp the inside of my card. I'm using Lawn Fawn Walnut Ink and some Gina K Craft cardstock for my card base. And I'm stamping out the other little bird and a heart and the sentiment that says dropping by to say hi. I've added some score tape to the back of my panel since it is a little bit warped and I want to make sure that holds down really tightly to the card front. And I'm going to center that and then press that down into place. I added foam tape to the back of most of my images so it would have some nice dimension and now I'm going to begin to set my little scene. So I added the deer in the bottom right corner and then I'll put the branch right over top of that. I can take my little squirrel and add him to the branch. I'll use some Tombow Mono Multi Glue to add the flower down in the bottom left corner, right where that grass is. I'm going to center that kind of between it a little bit towards the left so that it uh, accents the sentiment nicely. And then I'm going to add the thanks sentiment right over top of that. So I'll just line that up and get that right where I want it and press that down into place. Then I can grab the two little mushrooms and I've popped those up on the foam tape as well. And I'm going to add the, those to kind of make a little cluster of three down in that bottom left corner. And then I'll add my little robin down on the ground in front of the deer. And I'm just overlapping his tail with the deer's leg just a little bit to kind of make it seem more part of the scene. I considered adding some embellishments, but I felt like the images really stood on their own and really didn't need any other excess on the card. I thought anything else would be too much. But I did not like the way that the sentiment of the thanks was so white, so I just took the BG10 and added a little bit of that blue to kind of help it fade into the background. So that is going to complete today's card. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up and another peek at the inside. As I mentioned in my last Hello Bluebird video, this is a relatively new company to the industry and I think their images are super adorable. They are available both at their website and through Butterfly Reflections Inc. And I'll have links to all the products I use today in the description bar below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you. Here's two extra videos that will hopefully tide you over until my next one. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye-bye.